Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie. I'm a fiber artist, knitwear designer, content creator, and author. <laughs> I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time and considering my book Fast and Fabulous Knits is coming out in just a few weeks time, I thought it was the perfect timing to rank all of the patterns that will be featured in my book. If you're on the same side of the YouTube algorithm that I am on, I'm sure you would have seen these tier list videos. There are honestly so many creators who do them, but specifically in the fiber arts community, I have seen Emma from Made in the Moment do a version of this as well as Amy from Any Knits. So as I previously mentioned I wrote a book it's called Fast and Fabulous Knits it contains 18 patterns for quick knit fun modern trendy youthful colorful garments and whilst I absolutely love and adore all the patterns they would not have made it into the book if I didn't love them and wasn't proud of them when you have 18 patterns you're obviously going to like some more than others that's just how it works it's literally impossible for all 18 to be kind of ranked you know equally in my mind. I feel like if I had done this video a while ago, my ranking probably would look different. So this is definitely like subject to change. I feel like my favorites kind of change quite often, but there are a few that I've always kind of felt the strongest towards. So we'll see which ones those end up being. But yeah, I thought it would be fun just to like go through all of the patterns. I've created a tier list and I'm gonna be placing each pattern in the tier that I feel it deserves to be in. In case you didn't already know, the book is available for pre-order. The link is in the description as always. It comes out April 7th which is just a few weeks away and I'm just so so excited for all of these patterns to be yours but if you weren't sure if you wanted to get the book or not hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the patterns in this video before I show you all the tiers and get into the ranking I wanted to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of this video thank you so much to today's sponsor the Udi I've been genuinely obsessed with my Udi's for years they single-handedly got me through the pandemic through lockdown through the many highs and lows of working from home for the past couple of years so when the lovely people of the Udi reached out wanting to collaborate with me it was an absolute no-brainer my Udi have become a part of my winter wardrobe that I genuinely cannot live without. When I wake up, the first thing I do is put on my Udi. If I'm lucky, I'll take it off and get dressed for the day. And then of course, it's super ideal for a cozy night in. There is nothing I love more than throwing on my Udi after a long day, getting nice and cozy on my bed with a movie and of course my current whip to work on. It is just so soft and fluffy and warm. It really does just feel like you're getting a big hug. They also come in heaps of really cute prints and colors. I've previously gone for the tie-dye print, but decided to go for the basic soft solid pink color this time because it's just so me coded. I had to have it. If you're wanting to grab an Udi for yourself, make sure to use the link in my description and use the code JamieCreates40 to get $40 off your next order. Thank you so much again to Udi for sponsoring this video. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the ranking. Okay, this is a new type of format for me. I've got my laptop in front of me and you can see hopefully on the screen, I've got all my tiers and all the photos laid out underneath so that we can begin sorting. Before I start ranking, I wanna just quickly go through all the tiers. So the very top tier is She Is The Moment. Sorry, she is the moment. That's, I guess, my best Wendy Williams impression. I feel like this tier is self-explanatory. The best of the best, in my opinion, will be going in this tier. And I'm gonna try and be harsh, you know? I feel like I could obviously put all of them into this tier if I really wanted to, but I'm gonna try and really, only only, only the, the creme de la creme are gonna make it into this tier. The next tier is, and I honestly, I'm actually really proud of this tier, of this name, is How Many Letters in Fabulous? Obviously eight <laughs> is the answer. So the patterns that end up in this tier, they they ate. Like, what else do you want me to say? <laughs> if, if you didn't catch the reference, it's because the book is called Fast and Fabulous Knits. The next tier, which I guess is like the mid tier, is I see the vision. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I had a vision and it was achieved, but like maybe the vision just isn't, just isn't quite top tier, you know? It's not quite top, top tier or like eating level, but it's still like, you know, we love it, but maybe we don't love it, if that makes sense. Could live without. Generally when I'm designing a piece, it's usually just because it's filling a space in my closet that I want to be filled. Obviously when you're writing a book, like you have a lot of boxes to tick and I wanted to kind of cover a pretty broad range of garments and techniques and styles. So naturally not all 18 patterns are gonna be something that I wear every single day or reach for often. So I feel like that's probably what's gonna end up in this tier. Cause like I said, I'm obviously proud of all the designs. I like them all, but there are some that I definitely could live without and don't wear as much as the others. And the last tier, look, I'm gonna be, be straight up. I don't know if anything's gonna go into this tier because like I said, if 
if I really didn't like it, it wouldn't have made it into the book. So maybe I can do this again with like all my patterns or like everything I've made in a year or something like that because I'm sure it would end up being something in the just no tier. But I thought I'd put it there because you never know. I might, I might change my mind, but just going into this, I, I have a feeling that nothing is going to end up in there. But we've got to cover all of our bases, you know? We've got to have it top to bottom, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so those are the tiers. This is obviously subjective and you might have a different opinion. And I actually am very curious to know if you do. If you would have put a different pattern in a different tier, please let me know. I am so not bothered to get all of the samples and hold them up in front of you. It would just be such a chaotic mess. And so I am just gonna be putting the photos up on the screen with each pattern that I'm referring to so that you can follow along and know what I'm talking about. All right, we're just gonna go in order that as they appear. So first things first, we have the attention deficit jumper. Fitting, because this is actually the pattern that's on the cover. The, the photo I have here is not the cover photo, but it, it is the photo that's gonna be within the actual pattern in the book. We have to start strong here. Like I said, this is the pattern that ended up on the cover. So yeah, I, I can't not put it in she is the moment. That's gotta end up there. Like, it's on the cover, so it would be a bit weird if I didn't put it in the top tier. But like, what can I say? She is the moment, like, she's a cover girl. <laughs> in all seriousness though, this pattern had so much attention, <laughs> pun not intended at all, when I first put out the testing call. This one got by far the most applications, at least in that round. Heaps of people were interested in testing it, which obviously tells me that people are interested in making it. And honestly, it's one that is very close to my heart also because of the name and the story behind it. If it wasn't obvious, I have ADHD and that has been a huge part of my knitting journey is honestly why I started crocheting and knitting in the first place before I was even diagnosed. And I really wanted that part of me to be reflected in the book. And so that's reflected in this pattern, Firstly, it's got so much going on with all the different stitch patterns, so it's a little bit like my brain, kind of chaotic. But at the same time, in terms of the actual process of knitting it, I wanted it to be something that you can knit without getting bored. You got like constant motivation to kind of get to the next stitch pattern throughout. Because as much as knitting it really is helpful for my ADHD and for a lot of people, there also comes to a point where my lack of ability to hold my attention on things if that makes sense or to pay attention stay focused and stay motivated can kind of impact my ability to finish monotonous projects so a project that is constantly changing it's constantly exciting you're pretty much guaranteed to finish it and to not lose motivation and i'm really proud of it and i'm really happy with how it came out and i think i achieved that so yeah it's definitely one that means a lot to me and i think it's resonated with other people i hope it resonates with more people once the book comes out but yeah she, she is the moment, like what can I say? Okay, moving on to the Bambi jumper. She is an underrated gem in terms of my opinion. Like I don't think I really realized what this design would actually be when I was first making it. I wasn't really so sure about it even. Like I was like, ooh, I don't know how this is turning out. But once I finished it, I saw the vision, but like more. So I'm gonna put this in how many letters in Fabulous because I do think the Bambi jumper definitely did Eat. I'm trying not to rank these based on the actual photos from the photo shoot because there are some that are definitely like my favorite photos from the shoot but not necessarily my favorite designs so I'm trying not to let the photos impact too much but there's so many things that can impact and contribute to my decisions so the photos might kind of be subtly subconsciously impacting that but yeah also just like when we were shooting this i had a whole other plan to shoot it in a different room in the house that we were shooting it in but we just could not get the lighting to work for what we needed it to be and we basically had to pivot on the spot and we were under a lot of time pressure so we really didn't have like a ton of time to be like experimenting too much we had everything planned out really well so this was like the only one that we had to really just like okay what are we gonna do and yeah it turned out perfectly we decided we would use this backdrop that had featured in another pattern but uh, not as prominently. I'm literally standing in a ball pit <laughs> and you can't even tell. So yeah, it worked out so, so nicely. It's the exact same color as the jumper, but I think the, the jumper still really like shines in these photos. And yeah, I also just love this lace cable stitch. I think it really shows how much you can do with lace because there aren't any actual cables in it. It just looks like it. And I think that is so sick. And also that you can do really pretty lace garments using super chunky yarn. Like those are two things that I feel like people never really expect to go together but anything's possible okay anything is possible and i never like to count anything out 
or say, oh no, that can't be done because lace patterns are meant to be done with lace weight yarn. I'm like, I think in 2024, like we're past that, you know? So yeah, that's where the Bambi jumper is going. Love her to death. Okay, the Bright Like a Diamond cardigan. Ooh, I don't know where to put this one. This one is special to me because it was the first one that I knit, the first one I designed, the first pattern I wrote for the book over a year ago now. So I've had a lot of time to like sit with it. I feel like I don't pull for it as much, but I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's because of like the way that I styled it in the shoe, but like I definitely see this more as like a, like something you throw on, you know, with like a nice dress or something. So I'm definitely keen to like wear it during the winter. Like if I end up having to go to like some kind of event where I want to dress like nicely but then it's really cold so I need to have something nice to throw over my dress like I've done in this photo. I think I'll find myself reaching for it more in those situations but obviously it's been summer, it's been spring kind of since I've started wearing all these pieces so I should kind of give myself a little bit of grace there but I don't know. I don't know where to put it. I'm trying, I'm deciding between how many letters in Fabulous and I see the vision. I feel like I see the vision is a little bit harsh so I think I'm going to put it in how many letters in Fabulous because I do really like this design and I feel like it's it's simple it's just one really pretty diamond stitch but it's it's cool it's interesting and it's quick it's cropped it's cute I don't know it's I, I yeah mm, the fact that I don't have that much to say about it though maybe it maybe it should go nice the vision mm, no I think I'm gonna leave it I think it is I think it's fabulous so I'm it it it, it, it ate <laughs> so I think I'm gonna leave it there next up is the Cassie cardigan named after my beautiful dog who is probably fast asleep right now <sighs> I think this one's gonna go in I See The Vision, just because it is very basic, which is what I wanted. This is probably one of the most beginner-friendly patterns in the book. The only kind of more advanced technique in it is the double knitting, which I have like a tutorial linked for. So, you know, if a beginner did wanna try it, they have the resources to learn that te technique. But you honestly could knit it without the double knitted butter band if you really wanted to. You could just leave it with like a plain edging or add a ribbing if you wanted. The rest of it is so basic. It's just Fisherman's Rib, which is a very beginner friendly stitch, but has like a really pretty texture to it. But I don't know, like it is quite simple, which was the goal. Like, you know, you can't make everything for like super advanced knitters, even though honestly, I'm like tempted to do it sometimes, but I feel like you do need to have uh, options for beginners so that they can, you know, if they want to buy the book, then they can start with the more beginner friendly patterns and then work their way up to the more intermediate level, advanced level patterns. So that's kind of her purpose. I also really wanted to do something with mohair. There's two mohair patterns in the book. Obviously the book is all quick knits. So I wanted to show how with like a chunky mohair, you can still produce a quick garment. It doesn't always have to be super chunky yarn. That's only good for winter. Like I've been wearing the Cassie cardigan quite a bit throughout summer, especially at night. And it, it has its purpose, you know, and I'm, I'm really like glad it's included in the book. Like I don't want to, don't get me wrong. Like I don't want you to like twist my words or anything. But because it's pretty simple, I think I'm just, I, I see the vision, okay? But, and, and I think the vision was achieved. So yeah. Okay, the Color Me Stripe Jumper. That is what is next. Ooh, this is actually the last pattern that I knitted, wrote, designed, everything for the book. So it's definitely like the freshest in my mind. It was the most recent one. And it's one that I really love. I really love. It's quite different for what I've normally done, but incorporates quite a few of like my favorite design elements. And yeah, I just, oh, and it's like the photos, the photo is, I'm trying to let the photo like, you know, influence me too much. But at the same time, I talked about this in my last Instagram post, but like the wall in this photo, like that was already there. And when we dyed the yarn for this pattern, when Chloe and I designed the yarn, we did not, like I had not even found this place yet. So this was a complete coincidence. It's genuinely beyond me how this even happened. Like how, and even like the fact that like the stripes are like horizontal and then they become vertical, just like the pattern is like crazy to me. I think I have to put it in how many letters in Fabulous. I'm not sure if it, mm, maybe it should go in She Is The Moment. Okay, I'm, I'm putting it in how many letters in Fabulous for now, but I may change my mind later on. Okay, because I do really, really love this pattern. And I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, this one incorporates both intarsia and just regular stripes. So it's got a mix of different types of color work. And I don't know, like, I think I ate with this one. Like I just, I think, I think it, is, it should be there because I did eat, but like, maybe she is the moment. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, next up is the heartstrings vest. Hmm, hmm. I am not sure where to put this one because I do really love it. 
I think it's pretty, but I also, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm torn. I think I'm gonna put it in I See The Vision. Just once again, because it's kind of more on the simple side. I know it's got cables and that's obviously not like super basic, but it's just basically the one main cable design with some knits on the side and then the rest is just reverse stock knits. So like, you know, and it's chunky yarn, it works up pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure I knit this in like a day or two. So it hasn't like left as much of a like imprint on my memory and mind. And I don't, I don't reach for it as often, but it is really pretty. So, ugh. It's, I knew this was gonna be hard because I don't wanna like, I don't wanna like shit on any of my designs, but at the same time, I said we can't rank them all at the top, you know? We have to, we have to do it, so yeah. I think she serves her purpose and I see the vision. But did I eat with this one? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Maybe I'm being harsh, maybe I did eat. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Next up is the Lily Cardigan. Okay. This is like a crowd favorite. Like so many people, I'm so, it was so unexpected, honestly. So many people have said they want to make this. This is gonna be the first one that they make when they get the book, which is crazy to me. Like, I just, I don't think I appreciated her enough when I was making it. And uh, I'm making another one now. I showed it in my last knitting podcast that I uploaded last week. And I have actually made some progress on it since I filmed that, so. Yeah, we're kind of getting back into making my my second one. Like I said in the last video, it is the first pattern from the book that I'm making a second sample of. So that does say something. But in my opinion, like I don't think she is the moment. I, I, I love her and I'm so happy that so many people love this design. Like it makes me so happy and also shows that like we all have different kind of like tastes. And like sometimes you can't really like anticipate what people are going to gravitate towards. But yeah. I think she's going to go in How Many Letters and Fabulous because whilst I do love her, I think she's great. I, I don't think she's the moment. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really explain why. I would love to know like from other people, like why they feel more drawn to this pattern than the others. It's just fascinating to me. I, I get it's like super simple. It has a really pretty lace design. It's mohair. It's like very dainty and elegant, which is definitely um, all things I love about it. But I don't know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't expect that people would be uh, as excited about this one as they are, but it's great. I think I ate with this one, evidently, but I can't put her in the top tier. The top tier is looking very empty right now, so we've got to give the attention deficit jumper some company. Okay, the Magnolia jumper. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Deciding between I see the vision and could live without. You know, it's harsh. I do love this design. I love all my Magnolia designs. Like I've obviously gone back to the stitch multiple times, but I think maybe that's also why it's like I've done the stitch before in several designs. So like for me, it's kind of lost its novelty for a little bit, but I did want to do some adaptations of previous designs in the book. Like I've, I've done it with three of them actually, um, none of which have been ranked yet. So I will obviously tell you which ones that, that is, but yeah, I have the chunky Magnolia vest and I have the Magnolia top that I did with Hobby. So this is the third one. And I do really like it. I like that it's top down. I like that it has like the fun bell sleeves. But like, I think I could live with it. <laughs> Can I live without it? Like, I mean, obviously I could live without any of these realistically, but I'm gonna put it in could live without for now. Okay. But I may change my mind. <sighs> why am I, I don't know why. I'm just like compelled to put it there. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like offending myself. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see. I might end up putting it back up too. I see the vision, but we'll see. Okay, okay, moving on, moving on. All right, we've got the Miss Ziggy vest next. So like I said, that is another one of my adapted patterns from the Miss Ziggy jumper. Oof, I really like this design actually. I think I'm gonna put it in I see the vision. It's cute. I like that I did the contrasting color for the ribbing, um, but like it's pretty, like I said, basic. You know, I feel like it's definitely one of the more beginner friendly patterns in the book and yeah, like I've already done the Misugi jumper, so for me, it's never gonna, you know, be in that complete top tier region for me. But at the same time, I see the vision and the vision I think was achieved. Like, did I eat with it? I don't know. I don't know, up to you. What do you think? <laughs> okay, all the cardigan. She is the moment, immediate, immediate. Don't even have to think about that for a second. This is by far one of my favorite patterns in the book. I feel like I, I mean, like I ate with it, but like above, like above. <laughs> How many and fabulous like I just oh, I'm just so proud of myself because designing with cables is hard size grading with cables is also hard and I'm really proud of like how 
the pattern kind of came out and how my testers versions also came out in all the different sizes and I don't know I also like rushed through knitting the sample of this one which can sometimes not go so well because you don't pay as much attention to the finer details but I feel like I really I don't know I really I'm really really proud with how it came out and it has really special memories as well like I knitted while I was uh, away with my boyfriend at a little cabin which was so wonderful it's like out in nature and the cabin that we stayed at was actually called Orla so that's why I named it the Orla cardigan and it just reminds me of nature, especially the color that I knitted in. I don't know. I just, I love this design. It's like my staple dream cable cardigan. I wear it all the time and you just can't go wrong. Like you can't go wrong with a staple cable cardigan. And this was like exactly what I, what I envisioned and more. <laughs> okay. Next up is the sweetest pie jumper. I think I'm going to put it in how many letters in fabulous. I do really love the pattern like I really really do I'm like almost tempted to put it in as she is the moment but I think I'm gonna leave it in how many layers fabulous I love the sweetest pie jumper so much I love the turtleneck this is actually my first time doing a turtleneck and I really just love the fit and the way that it just like feels like I'm getting a hug I also really love that it has some side slits which my other patterns don't have so this is the only one in the book that has those so that also kind of makes it stand out a little bit and yeah I just think it like I tried a lot of things with this one and they kind of all worked out how I wanted it to so yeah okay the twist and shout vest trying not to let the photos impact my decision because these are some of my favorite photos from the shoot by far but the design itself okay we're trying not to like I said let the photos impact my decision I think I'm gonna still put it in how many letters in fabulous like I I think I ate although the design is obviously quite simple I really love the lace cable stitch that I use because it incorporates obviously two different techniques lace and cables and yeah I just think it really shows kind of what you can create when you combine different techniques and yeah it's just fun it's chunky it's quick it's stylish you know all the things and i think i ate i think i ate i don't know i don't know <laughs> next up is the v stripey vest so this is the last one that was uh, adapted from a previous pattern which was the v stripey jumper i think if i had to choose which pattern i prefer out of those two which design i prefer i probably would prefer the v stripey jumper just because i tried to kind of emulate that oversized slouchy you know just relaxed fit of the v stripey jumper for the vest but i think in my personal style when it comes to vests as you'll see with pretty much all the other vests in the book i do prefer something a bit more fitted i like wearing them on their own and i don't know i just like something a bit more cropped and fitted that's just my personal style but i know there's a lot of people out there who really like to layer their vest which is kind of what i was going for with this but that being said i don't really reach for this one when i'm deciding on my outfit for the day i love the color combo that i did though i really really love those colors together and i like that i still stay true to the b stripey jumper design with the oversized the rolled hem and just that like slouchy relaxed feel that's like very versatile and good for layering and obviously if you want it unless you're the size extra small which sorry if you are but if you're not you can always size down if you want it to be less oversized so there's definitely kind of versatility with how you can kind of approach the the ease and the fit etc but i still think i could live without it like i don't really pull for it so i think i'm gonna put it in could live without i don't think it's like a total no i could live without it but i still you know i get it i respect it maybe i should have made, i should have made that the the tier name i get it i respect it <laughs> Oh, Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> also, I really, I'm so sorry if you can hear my computer. The fan is going crazy. I don't know how to get this to stop. I've, I've closed so many tabs and apps, but for some reason it still just does not want to be quiet. So if you can hear that, I'm really sorry. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Next up is the Zesty Vest. Dare I say she is the moment. Oh, I don't know if I would have always said this, but I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I've underrated this pattern. Like, I freaking love this design. I love how it came out. I executed my vision to perfection. Like I had a sketch and then it just, it, it just, it came exactly how I wanted it to on the first attempt. And like, that doesn't always happen. And especially with the lemon, like the duplicate stitch, like it just looks perfect in my opinion. And the fit is like very different to all of my other vests. It's much more of like a boxy kind of almost like a tee fit but i would still consider it a vest it's you know relaxed slouchy it's oversized but it's still it cropped and cute like i don't know i just 
love it and also it is such a quick knit even though it's knit with arum weight yarn so that was something that i wanted to like emphasize in the book that it's not necessarily just about the weight of yarn that you use like arum weight yarn i wouldn't necessarily consider to be like a super quick knit like i think it obviously is relative like if you're only used to knitting with fingering weight yarn then you're gonna think arum weight yarn is really quick so it's all relative but yeah like i still knit this one up really quickly like in a couple of days especially just like the yarn that I used itself which was the cowgirl blues single yarn which is like a mohair and a wool blend which is really cool it's just like so soft and nice to knit up that it just it just slid off the needles genuinely and I just I don't know the colors I used I just oh, it's just so cute like I can't I actually can't not put it in this teal because it's genuinely one of my favorites and I really I do not wear it enough and I, I feel like I forget that I have it sometimes and that is a crime like we need to rectify that before it gets too cold like oh I definitely need to wear it more and I love that you can layer it like I've done in this photo like I layered, layered it with a long sleeve like turtleneck underneath but I also can wear it on its own or I could wear it with something else underneath like I don't know there's just so many options and yeah it's just oh. It just makes me happy every time I see it. It makes me happy. So she is the moment. The Zesty Vest, also the name. The Zesty Vest, like, come on. Come on. <laughs> like, it's it's too good. Next up is the Somewhere Over the Raglan Jumper. I don't know where to rank this one. I'm trying, like, once again, I don't want to let the, I don't want to let other people's opinions impact me. I also don't want to let the photo impact me too much. But at the same time, like, I feel like I always like this pattern but once I saw all the nice positive feedback that I got from people after I posted these photos, it's definitely like kind of gone up a bit in my ranking. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Because How Many Letters in Fabulous is, is looking stacked right now. But I feel like putting it in I See the Vision is not giving it enough credit. Yeah, no, I think I have to. I, I think I ate with this one. <laughs> I think I ate with this one. I think I have to put it in How Many Letters in Fabulous. Anyway, that's that's where it's going. Also, I don't have this in an order right now. Maybe I'll put them in order after, but for now I'm just putting them, you know, one by one. And then maybe at the end I will put them in an order so that you know my exact 1 to 18. This one would probably be towards the bottom of How Many Letters and Fabulous if I was to rank these in order. So we'll see. Okay, Ivy Jumper. She is the moment. Like, enough said. Although it is very repetitive and the construction is very simple, the stitch speaks for itself. Like we didn't even be doing any kind of like insane details or interesting shaping or I don't even know, like design elements when you're dealing with a stitch like this. I feel like the stitch needs to take a center stage and that is exactly what it did. I love this piece so much. I love the stitch so much. I just think it is so beautiful i like have to make another one like i'm already i've been dreaming up my second sample for so long i just need to find the right yarn the right color way for this yarn but i just the green i don't know just everything about my sample is like it has my heart i love wearing it i always feel like so classy and it's such a fun one and one that i'm really proud of she is the moment like what can i say there was no way i was not going to be putting that in the top tier like not even not even a second thought okay the kaleidoscope cardigan interesting 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 i'm not sure if this is going to go in i see the vision or how many letters and fabulous i think i'm going to put it in i see the vision because whilst i love it and i do wear it a lot oh, i wear it a lot can i put it in i see the vision if i wear it a lot like that's kind of where i'm not sure like i wear this like quite a lot especially considering the fact that the weather has obviously been warm you know what i think i'm going to put this in how many letters and fabulous and i'm gonna put somewhere of the raglan in i see the vision chaos 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 ensued it just yeah i don't feel right even though it's it's very beginner friendly it's basic it's stock it it's it's simple it's not groundbreaking by any means but i do i wear it all the time it's a classic it's a staple and i feel like i can't not put it in how many lives and fabulous like if i was able to create something that i reach for all the time that i also think like looks so like the color choices like putting those three colors together like i look it I was envisioning something and it it it, it really came out and I, I guess you know I see the vision could be there but I feel like I really I, I the vision I excelled in in achieving the vision for this one and the fit is perfect the yarn is wonderful it feels wrong putting it in I see the vision and I think because I, I definitely also wear it more than the somewhere of the raglan I think that's why it's got to go up there 
gotta make a little switcheroo because I can't like I can't put them all in Hamila's and Fabulous like that defeats the purpose so I think that's where it's going um I also we love a beginner friendly pattern like sometimes simple is better like you don't always need to be doing too many complicated techniques that are not necessary the design still works perfectly with very simple you know decreases stockinette ribbing that's all there's like genuinely nothing else to it and we love it we love that and it's seamless which we also love obviously <laughs> last but not least the stairway to heaven vest like i said trying not to let the photos impact but for obvious reasons this is one of my favorite shoots that we did for the book i, I, I don't even have to explain why i mean you can see the photos i wear this one so much i i, I love it i have to mm. I, th I, th I think this one has to go in How Many Letters and Fabulous. I don't think it's good enough to be in She Is The Moment. I mean, it's a great pattern. I love my sample. I wear it all the time. I would love to make another one. I also, my testers absolutely ate <laughs> with this one. I'm just using that all the time now because of the tier name. But yeah, my testers absolutely killed it. And I, I really, it, it, is a, it is one of my favorite patterns, but I don't, that was a go in She Is The Moment. Like, is it? that much like ahead of the others i don't think so i feel like it's on a pretty similar playing field to the other ones in this category so yeah that's where it's gonna stay but it's pretty up there in the category so i think i will go and like reorganize all of these to reflect my true feelings but yeah, that's all of them. So <laughs> that brings us to the end of the, of the putting them into tears section. Obviously, like I said, I didn't think anything was going to go into Just No. Like if there was something going into there, like I'd have to really reconsider like why it ended up in the book. So yeah, we might have to do another one of these videos eventually with uh, more of my patterns because I'm sure that if we were, if we was judging against everything I've ever designed, we'd probably have some that I might look back on less fondly than others okay now i'm just like do i want to make any switcheroos with the order like i don't even know if i can pick one favorite like i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do this i think ola is my favorite I, I'm, I'm just i'm feeling that right now i want to probably put ivy above zesty do i want to switch ivy and attention deficit yeah i think so i think i just i probably wear ivy a bit more yeah, I think that's probably my order for the top tier. Okay, how many layers of fabulous? I think I'm going to keep the Bambi jumper where it is. I'm going to pop the Stairway to Heaven vest up there. Um, color me striped for sure. Maybe even above Stairway to Heaven. The sweetest pie is going here. Mm, I reckon Kaleidoscope. Oh. No, Kaleidoscope, Lily, yeah. I think that's probably, I don't know, this could, I'm trying to do this like kind of quickly, but this could probably change, but yeah, that would probably be my order for How Many Lives and Fabulous. Okay, I see the vision. Okay, so I think somewhere of the Raglan is my favorite out of those. Uh, yeah, then probably the Cassie Cardigan. Yeah, I reckon that's a good order. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm, I'm debating swapping the Miss Iggy vest and the Heart Strings vest, but I'm gonna leave it. And then, yeah, I think could live with that. I will leave that as it is. So, okay, this is my official ranking from top to bottom. We have <clears throat> the Orla Cardigan, the Ivy Jumper, the Attention Deficit Jumper, the Zesty Vest. Then we are going down to How Many Letters in Fabulous. We have the Bambi Jumper, Color Me Stripe Jumper, Stairway to Heaven Vest, Sweetest Pie Jumper, Bright Like Diamond Cardigan, Kaleidoscope Cardigan, Lily Cardigan, Twist and Shout Vest. Then in I See the Vision, we have the Somewhere Over the Raglan jumper. <laughs> Ooh, Somewhere Over the Raglan. I, don't know, I like the way that that rolled off the tongue. <laughs> um, Cassie Cardigan, Heartstrings Vest, Miss Ziggy Vest, and then in Could Live Without. Sadly, we have the Magnolia jumper and the V Stripey Vest. Okay, so my bottom three, without even realizing, are the three that I had that were adaptations of my previous designs. So I think that just speaks to the fact that like, I don't know, I just feel like it's like I've, it's been done before because I've done it before. So it's no hate to these designs actually. And obviously I liked all those original designs enough to adapt them into something for the book. But like, I just feel like I'm less excited about them because of all the like completely new designs like for me that I did. So 
yeah, interesting. That was a bit un unintentional, but I guess that's what's happened. Oh, it's so hard to do this. I feel like I'm picking a favorite child. It's just, oh, when you've had these, like, when you've been working on something for so long, like, it is pretty intense to, like, be ranking them, but I put this upon myself. Like, I did this to myself. I chose to rank them. That was very fun. I enjoyed that, as painful as it was at times. It really allowed me to kind of, like, reflect on all the designs and why I like them, and I don't know. I, I just, I enjoyed that and I would love to do it again for something else. And also, if there's anything else you want me to like rank and do a tier list of with literally anything where it might be like other patterns or like other people's patterns I've knit, I don't know. Like there's so many different options, but I, I, I enjoy this video format. So if you, if you enjoy it as well, let me know and I'd be happy to do some more videos like this. Once again, I feel like I am just shoving this down your throat, but my book, Fast and Fabulous Knits, is available for pre-order. It comes out on April 2nd if you're in the US or Canada. Uh, if you're anywhere else in the world, it will probably be sometime between mid-May to late May. As soon as I have the date, I will let you know. But yeah, you can pre-order it up until that time if you're international. But if you are in the US or Canada, you can pre-order it just for the next few weeks and then it will be available to buy. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok. And of course, if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe. I upload pretty much every week. So you'll be seeing plenty of content from me. I will stop talking about my book eventually, <laughs> maybe. But yeah, right now that's something that obviously I'm very, very excited about. So my next video is, should be a vlog from my experience at the Australian Yarn Show where I'll be speaking. So look forward to that. I'm very, very excited to document the entire weekend in Canberra. I also have a Patreon if you wanted to support me over there. You get exclusive content, early access to these videos, pattern discount codes and more. And I would love it if you wanted to join that community over there and support me in that way. Thank you so much to my cable cuties for all your support. I'll put your names on the screen right here. It means the absolute world to me. Anyway, that's all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.